Hey, what's up, Cuban World and YouTube? It's me, Jack343434, also a emo lover on speed solving. And uh, yeah, this is going to be my first non introduction video. And it is going to be about how to memorize Megamix for uh, blindfold solving. <clears throat> uh, in my opinion, there aren't really any uh, good ways to memo Megamix, at least that most people use. Um, they do something like group it together, which, you know, that just doesn't make sense, because you, you, you just can't really do that. And, uh, yeah, they, mem they memorize, like, certain parts of it first, and it's just a whole bunch of shit that doesn't make sense. But, uh, yeah, mine makes a lot more sense, and, you know, it's got the same amount of memorization. Assuming you use the journey method. Journey or rooms method. Because if you don't, then it is uh, one third more than normal. Uh, and it would be to use a normal memo method. You know. Well, you'll, you'll see what I mean. But, uh, yeah. So basically, like with normal blindfold solving, where uh, you know, let's use spefs, which I don't actually use, but if I'm correct, spefs is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, H, wait, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. Yeah, you get it from there. Um, yeah, the lettering scheme on the Megamix, at least my way, is uh, pretty, pretty much the same. It's just, you know, one sticker, this is called a list, I mean sticker list, but one sticker has a letter to it, but there is much more uh, stickers on the Megamix than there is 3x3. Three three. So, we'll so you will end up using the letters A through T, and you will use them three times each. So, uh, right now, after I'm finished saying this, there's going to be a graphic of how you group the this this lettering. So, okay, um, not going to put it up yet, but basically, you have three colors. One of them is red, one of them is blue, and one of them is yellow. And, um, you know, okay, so these four sides are red. Sorry, they're blue. Whoops. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, they're blue. So, using spefs, or whichever what you want to use, uh, this would be A, B, C, D, E, F, wait, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N. You get the idea. Um, yeah, so that would be this would be blue A, right? This would be blue A. And, yeah, so these would be blue, and that would be blue A, and that would be blue I. Wait, no, that would be blue G. And now, these four are red. Up, front, left, and right. And then the face is, uh, da mm, uh, down L, down R, down B L, and down, so these three, these four, I mean, these four are red. So pretty much just do a, a left-handed X inverted. No, just a normal left-handed X, like this. Sorry. It's kind of hard to, yeah. Okay, you do a left-handed X, then a right-handed X. So then these four are red. So like this. And then if you do a... If you do a right-handed 
x inverted 2, and then a z, these, these, uh, these four are yellow. Okay, you probably don't understand what I mean right now, so I'm going to put a graphic up and it's going to give you a much, hopefully a much better understanding of what I'm talking about because I can't really explain it very well. So, here it is. Okay, now after seeing the graphic, you should get it. Um, I mean, you don't have to go exactly... You don't have to go off exactly the way I do it. You know, you don't have to use SPEFs or the way I use SPEFs. I use anti-SPEF. But... Okay, now that you get the lettering scheme and the color system, um, so let's go on to how you memorize it. Let's say you get a red P and a blue D. Um, during normal blind, you would just memorize, say, panda. But during this kind of blind, you would memorize purple panda. Okay? Do you understand that? So you basically combine the colors together and now you're thinking what happens if I use a uh, a red B and a blue D? You would think that is still purple panda, but that is actually pink panda. So what I do is basically I I assign specific colors to specific color combinations. So, for me, uh, a blue, a blue followed by a red, is always purple. Purple blank. So purple panda. But a red followed by a blue is pink panda. And then you do this for all the other combinations. There's like, yeah, there's six. No, there's nine. Or, yeah, so there's nine combinations. Oh, and also red, red, or blue, blue, or yellow, yellow. That's, you know, yellow, or red, or blue. The primaries. Um, I'm trying to think of what else needs to be said. Um, yeah. So, you want to use journey or rooms for this method, because... Well, even then, journey and journey and room is not always the same for everyone. If you use journey or room and you just strictly visualize it, no no words or anything, then you have to memorize less than the average person. If you do memorize words like I do, you have to you have to memorize a bit more. So the the person who uh memorizes it completely uh, visually, so what they see, they would memorize the image of a pink panda. But I, and a lot of people, would memorize the words, the word pink, and then panda. Um, also with this method, you cannot create colors using the two letters, because that'll confuse you a lot. And you can't memorize a, you can't visualize an orange purple. That's just weird. You can't do that. So, um, as for actually solving the Megamix blindfold, um, I'm not going to teach you that. I'm going to give you a link to a really good site that shows you exactly how to do it. It's not too complicated. There's like you only have to memorize, I think it's five algs. No, it's six algs. That's not bad at all. So, I don't think there's anything more to cover. I might have missed something. If I did, then I'll just put an annotation. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. See ya.